In this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, today we are going to learn how to add a text to your videos. I'm sure you want to know how I did that, maybe in a different tutorial. Now, let's get rolling with the intro! Now let's get started with the tutorial and I'm already inside Premiere Pro. I'm gonna guide you also through my workspace so you can match it on your laptop if you wish to do so. And first of all I've got the project panel open, program panel to see what's happening in my video, the essential graphics which is fundamental for this tutorial, effect controls panel, the tools panel and the timeline. I've got a single clip, video clip in my project today which I have already imported to the timeline in my sequence. Let's learn straight away how to add a text to our videos and we have a couple of ways to do so. You can choose the one you prefer. We can either go to the tools panel, in this case down here for me, and we go to the type tool. If you notice there's a tiny arrow here in this icon at the bottom right of the icon. You just wanna click and hold it and you will have two options now to create a type tool. So an horizontal text or vertical type tool, which is a vertical text. And that's completely up to you. I'm gonna show you how to create an horizontal text today, but you can choose vertical as well. This is the first way to create a text, but I prefer to do it from the essential graphics panel, which I have right there. So when you're here in the essential graphics, you have browse and edit. So two different options, go to edit, and go down here to this icon, which looks like a paper sheet. And that says new layer. Let's click on it. And now you can choose text, which is the horizontal text or vertical text, exactly like from the tool panels. So what we're gonna do is to press on text. And the new text will be created, as you can see in your program panel, but also a new layer will appear in your timeline, in your sequence and the text will start exactly where your playhead was at that specific time on the timeline. So if I want to create a text at the beginning of my timeline, what I have to do is to move the playhead at the beginning of my timeline. So I'm going to delete the text we have created and I'm gonna show you the third way to actually create a text. I'm gonna press V on my keyboard for the selection tool first. Here we go, the tool changed and now I'm gonna press T as text or actually type tool. T and you can see the icon changed on my cursor and now I can just press on the program panel and create a new text from scratch. So that's the difference by pressing T on the keyboard you will not have any actual text on the program panel and you can type whatever you want. But if you create a text here from the essential graphics panel you already have something say new text layer. The good thing of the essential graphics is that we can manage different text at the same time inside the essential graphics. As you can see we still have one layer on the timeline which started at the beginning of the timeline because that's when we chose to put our playhead at and we can play with different text at the same time. So we have everything in a single box. Now I'm gonna delete one because I only need one text for this tutorial and let's carry on. By the way you can add as many texts as you want so if you want to create another one you just go to the new layer icon and keep, pre and keep creating text. There you go, that's my vertical text. You can recognize the vertical text here in the list because you have an arrow facing down which means it's a vertical text. Easy, right? Okay, let's get rid of this and let's start working on the actual text. Now we can stylize our text and to do so we actually need to select the text we want in the essential graphics panel. As you can see nothing is selected right now here and I don't have many options apart from the transform options which is gonna move my text around the frame. To actually stylize the text I'm gonna click on it and first of all I double click on it to write what I want to write and we're gonna call it tutorial. As soon as I selected it, you might have noticed the menu down here expanded. We got, we got different menu options now. And actually I'm gonna take the essential graphics to the very right hand side so 
I can see all the options. Now what I'm gonna do is to guide you through the different options we have in this big menu. Responsive design, this is more for animation and we're gonna check it in a different tutorial. So I'm gonna leave it for now, but we're gonna check the align and transform options. Let's say for example, I don't like the position of this text in the frame, but I want to align it centrally. So vertically and horizontally at the center of the frame. What I have to do is to press on these two icons, vertical center, and you notice the text moved vertically at the center of the frame, but I also want to center it horizontally. So I just go to the next icon, horizontal center, and click on it. And there you go, my text is now at the very center of the frame. Let's say I want my text at the left-hand side of my frame, then I go here to align to the left. And there you go, and I can do to the right and to the top, or the bottom, you know, you can play around with this stuff. If instead you want to move your text to a specific pixel or somewhere in the frame, you can just go here to this icon, toggle animation for position, and just play with these two values. So one is the horizontal value, the first one is the horizontal value, so you can just click on the value and drag the value up and down to move your text, but also you can type whatever you want. So if you wanna place your text at pixel 700, you type 700, press OK, and that's it. Bear in mind, 700 is related to the anchor point of your text. And of course, you can play with the horizontal values as well. The next one is actually the anchor point I just mentioned. So every image or text in uh, Premiere Pro or any animation software has a center. This center called anchor point is the anchor to which all the effects or positioning of the specific item are linked to. To actually show you the anchor point, I need to switch from the type tool, so from T on my keyboard to the V tool, which is the selection tool. So I'm gonna press V here. And as soon as I did that, you can now see a different type of selection here in the program panel. And the anchor point is literally this round icon here at the bottom left corner of my text. Now, have a look at this. Whenever I drag one of the icons, the anchor point will stay in the frame, but the text will move far away or closer to the anchor point according to what I'm doing with the values. More or less now, the anchor point is at the center, the bottom center of my text, but let's say I also want it to the vertical center. So I'm just dragging the value down, and that's more or less, this is approximate just for, to show you how it works. Now, whatever I do with my text, the text will scale or reposition according to the anchor point. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I mean just using the scale value here. So the next icon is the scale. As you can read, animation for scale, we're not gonna press or anything, but I'm gonna type 200 on the scale, which means I'm going to scale up my text of uh, double the size, basically. And the text scaled up accordingly to the anchor point, so centrally, symmetrically. But if I move my anchor point to the bottom left of my text, check this out, somewhere there, and I'm gonna scale it up even further to 300%, the text now scaled up in relation to the new position of my anchor point. In this case, scaling up towards the top and the right hand side of my frame and not centrally anymore. And that's how the anchor point works. It's a bit tricky in the beginning, it's just practice. I'm gonna go back and place it in the middle. And let's carry on. We will find the rotation, this uh, arrow going to the left, that's the rotation. So we can just rotate the text to the left or to the right and I'm gonna go back to zero. The styles we're gonna get back at the end of the tutorial, more or less, and let's go to text. That's where we can actually change the font, the color, and add some effects to the text. First of all, I'm going to change the font, and the one I really like is the Gotham, and I'm gonna play with the Gotham Black, nice and chunky, and we're gonna change also the size. To increase the size of the font, you just go here to font size and type whatever you want, 150, that's quite cool for me. And then we're gonna change the alignment of the text. This is the actual paragraph. It's not the position we have seen before. So I'm gonna align the text centrally at the center. Here we am. And now 
I go back here to the align and transform and align it at the center of the frame. The next icons are to align the text to the vertical position of the paragraph and that happens only if you have different lines. So if I press on the icons now, nothing happens. But if I type a new line here, and then I go and press on the icon, for example, that says center text vertically, now the text is centered vertically. But I'm gonna undo that, and we go to the next option, which is the tracking. The tracking basically is the space between each letter of your text. So if I type 10 or 20 or 40, then I will add different pixels between each letter. And I'm gonna go back to zero. The leading instead, which is the next icon, is the space between each line. So if I have two different lines, uh, like that, and then I'm gonna play with the leading, I can just increase or decrease the space between those two lines. Undo again. Then we can change the style of the font and we can make it a bit bigger and even chunkier with this first icon, which is called Fox Bold. So it's gonna make the text bolder, as you can see. Then we have the italic, which is gonna make it oblique. And then we have all the capital letters. So if you're using a text in lowercase to make it all capital letters, you just go here and all caps will make it all capitals. The opposite is the small caps icon. Then you have the superscript if you want to add tiny numbers on the right hand side or letters on the right hand side at the top of your text and underline and so on. Let's scroll down and here we can change the fill, the color of our text. To do so, you need to have this fill option ticked because if you don't, the text will disappear because there's no color in our text. So let's click on that and now we go to fill, we click on fill and the color picker will pick up. This is the palette, the color palette. Let's say I want a blue color. I just select here on my wheel the blue color, press OK. I can also add a stroke to my text, around my text, so I just tick on stroke. And now there's a tiny stroke around the text, but I'm gonna increase it just by going here to the right hand side and type 10, for example. We can add another stroke around this, the first stroke. And to do so, we press on the plus button, add a stroke to this layer. We do it, a new color palette option popped up. We're gonna click on it and we're gonna go on the red, for example, press OK. The stroke is not very visible because I need to increase the size of it. And I type 10 once again and that's my text right now. We can also add a background. What this option does is to create a rectangular shape uh, behind your text with the size of your text. Of course, we can change the color. I leave it gray for now. And we can also change the opacity and the size of this background. So let's go to 100%. This is how you change the opacity of the background. As you can see, whenever I scroll up, that's gonna increase the opacity. It's gonna make my background opaque and not transparent as it was. And the next, uh, the next option is to change the size of this background. I just go here and type whatever pixels I want to increase it to, 20, there it is. And we can add a shadow to the text as well. But to add a shadow, I'm gonna actually untick the background or I'm not gonna able to see it. So I'm gonna tick on the background, tick on the shadow, and now you'll see the shadow here in around the text. And once again, we can change the opacity of it. So we can go to 100%. We can change the direction of the light, which means the direction of the shadow. So we can move it around the text. We can change the distance between the text and the shadow. The size of our shadow, make it bigger, but also we can fade it and make it a bit blurrier. Something like that. And then we have the option mask with text, which once again, it's a bit more complicated. We're gonna find it out in a different tutorial. So stay tuned right here, hit the subscribe button. Now, one of the other good features of Adobe Premiere Pro now is that we can save the style we have just created as a preset. So that's very cool because if you want to use the same style in a different tutorial or for a different text, we can. And to do so, we just go here in the essential graphics under style. That's what I mentioned to you before. We're gonna click on the menu 
and we're going to create this style. So click on create style and you're going to name it as you wish. I'm going to call this blue and red. You can call it whatever you want. Press OK. Now if you go to the project panel, a new item has been created, which is actually the style of your text. We're going to organize the project. You know I like to do that. And I'm going to create a new bin and I call it text styles. And here I'm going to drag all my styles, the new styles I create. If you want to use this style in the same project, what you have to do is to go here in the essential graphics, create a new text. Automatically, the text will appear with a new style, but if it doesn't, what you have to do is to go in style, and now your style blue and red will appear under this list. So you just need to click on it, and that's it, as simple as that. But if you want to use this style, in a different project, then you need to export this style. And to export your style, you want to go to the project panel, right click on the style you want to copy or export, and go down to export text styles. And now you can save the style and the file wherever you want, either in your project or your desktop, wherever you save your project of Premiere Pro. I'm going to cancel it. So that as simple as that. I want to show you one more thing before we end up the tutorial. For now, we just created an individual text, but we can also create a text box. And to do so, I'm going to press T. Now, as soon as I click in the program panel to create a text, I also hold it and drag it to the bottom right to create a text box. And I'm going to do it right now. So I click here and carry my mouse down. And that's now my text box, which has already the style selected, the one we have created before. And we can type things. And as you can see, my text will keep going until it will hit the uh, boundaries of my text box. Now, as you know how to add a text to a video, stay tuned on this channel because in the next tutorial, we're going to learn how to add a video inside a text. That's a different thing. So hit the subscribe button now and the like button. And also, if you want to enhance and learn more about video editing, go and check my online courses at mamoair.com. Some of those courses have been marked as bestseller on Udemy as well. I've got hundreds of students and I can't wait to see you there. So definitely go and check them out. And as you're watching a tutorial about graphic and text, you might like my course on how to build a graphic package for your YouTube channel. And you can find a link up here, but also in the description tab. Now I have to say arrivederci and I can't wait to see you in the next video. So stay tuned. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.